All right, there we go. Sorry, everybody. Okay, so um, what I wanted us to, or what I had planned for us today was to discuss the sum to infinity formula. I know there were people that asked questions last time about um, sigma notation, and that is something that I will come back and I will do with you guys when we get to um, the revision for tests and exams. But unfortunately, I couldn't fit it all into this particular course, um, but I wanted to still touch on at least all of the topics that you are going to cover. All right, so sum to infinity is um, quite an easy thing to understand if you understand the exponential function. All right, so just very quickly, I just want to point out to you when a sum to infinity can exist. So remember, when we are calculating a um, or working with a geometric progression, all right, so in other words, we've got Sn equals a um, r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. This is geometric, all right, or exponential. All right, so if we were to plot the growth of this, it would make a pattern that would go like that. It would make an exponential equation. Now, we know that not all exponential equations look like this because we can reflect them over the y-axis. And then we can go and we can reflect them over the x-axis as well. All right, so now there are certain situations where a sum to infinity can be calculated and where a sum to infinity cannot be calculated. So if you have got a geometric progression and it goes like this, and your asymptote is over here, you cannot calculate a sum to infinity, okay? Because this just keeps going on and on and on forever and ever and ever. But if you have an exponential equation, an exponential function, and it's going like this, so that's also an exponential graph, and your asymptote is up here, there is going to get to, to a certain point where it cannot go through your asymptote. So here it is possible for us to calculate a sum to infinity. And our sum to infinity is actually the asymptote of our exponential function, if we could plot it like that. Okay, you can also calc uh, calculate a sum to infinity if your exponential pattern does this in shape and your asymptote is over there, so it can't get smaller than this particular number, then it is also possible for you to calculate a sum to infinity. So it only works in certain situations. Now, the situations that it works in, so in other words, this one over here and this one over here, depends on this. Okay, so it's only when the value of r is bigger than minus one but smaller than one will either will you be able to calculate a sum to infinity. Okay, so if r is equal to two or it's equal to negative three, it means you cannot calculate a sum to infinity. All right, based on the shape of the resulting graph, if you were to draw, if you were to draw it. Okay, no one's going to ask you that. I just wanted to explain that to you before we get started on this particular section. So it's not always possible to calculate a sum to infinity. It only works when r is a number that's greater than negative one or smaller than one. Um, and when a sequence or pattern has an r value that's greater than one but smaller than one, we refer to it as a converging or a convergent, convergent geometric series. Okay, so that would be like this one over here and that one over there. This one over here with the red cross on it, it is referred to as a diverging series and we do not study those in matric. Okay, so you do not need to worry about diverging series. We're only going to talk about converging or convergent geometric series. Okay, our sum to infinity. So this is our formula over here. Let's just grab that and move it down here. Let's just grab this and pull that over here. So there is the formula for sum to infinity. There you can all see the sum to infinity symbol. So this is sum to infinity. All right, so that bit over there is our sum to infinity. 
This letter A up here represents the first term always. And we all know what R means by now. R is our constant ratio. Okay, so again, our first example, I'm going to show you how to calculate a sum to infinity just by subbing into the formula. It's very, very easy. Okay, so when we read the question here, we can see that they've asked us to calculate the sum to infinity. That is our instruction. Calculate the sum to infinity. So it means calculate this bit over here of the geometric series. And they give us the series. We know what A is. It's equal to 1 over 2. We need to work out what R is. So remember, we work out what R is by taking term 2 and dividing it by term one. Of course, you can do this on your calculator. So if you do this on your calculator, you're going to end up with one over four, and that's going to be times two over one. Two goes into itself once, goes in there twice. So your that's R right. will be a half. Please, can we stay on mute unless we have any questions? Yes, the corner is equal to one over two. So it meets this criteria that we were talking about over here, where R has to be a number that is between negative one and one. Okay, otherwise it would not be possible for us to calculate our sum to infinity. All right, so now we're gonna go and sub in. Sum to infinity is A, which is one over two, divided by one minus R, and R is equal to a half as well. Okay, we have to put that into our calculator. And we end up with an answer of you should be getting an answer of. Okay, yes, that's it. That's it. Absolutely. Very, very easy. Okay, so as I had said, once I have done the explanation of the example, then I'm going to open the floor up to questions. If there are no questions, then we can go ahead on to the next thing. Are there any questions? Yes, Penga, sum to infinity is only applicable to geometric sequences. So there is no sum to infinity for an arithmetic sequence. Please also take screenshots. Just before teacher Leah moves on, if you don't have a question, take a quick speed short, or if you have it written down, perfect. But just for reference. Thanks, you, Linda. So glad you reminded us about that. Okay, are there any other questions? Can I move on? Okay. Yeah, okay, I'll ask this panel now. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, so moving on to the next thing, All right? So here is an opportunity for you guys just to practice this. Calculate the sum or find the sum of each of the following infinite geometric series. So because they use the words infinite geometric series, they're implying we have to use our sum to infinity formula. All right, so you can try A or B or both if you're a fast finisher, and then we'll mark the answers and we'll move on. Okay. Yes, David, I see you've got a hand up. Go for it. Okay, ma'am. Okay, for sum to infinity, after finding out the answer, is it always a must to say if the, the answer is convergent or divergent? No, it's not. It's not. Because so it, it can only be convergent. It can't be divergent. Because if it's a divergent series, you would not be able to calculate a sum to infinity. Okay, okay. but it's not necessary to do so. Okay. Good, That's, I'm seeing some nice answers here. Lovely, well done. Oh, 
Oh, well done, guys. We're moving, we're moving. Let's have a look at some answers again. Good job, everybody. Well done. Quite right. Okay. Nice. Okay, so I'm just going to put the answer up to the first one. So long while you guys are busy with the second one. I think you have all got the correct answer. There we go, Chloe, quite right, and Lefazzo, quite right, Lorato, yes, very nice, well done, Michaela, yes, Offense, well done, everybody, quite right. Okay, so some of you have left it as an improper fraction, some of you have pressed the SD button, it really, really doesn't matter. Okay, so there's the value of A, there's the value of, sorry, R. Okay, and we're all getting the same answer. Okay, so either you are ending up with negative 42.67 or negative 128 over 3. Okay, good job, everybody. That is absolutely perfect. It's just a case of subbing in, popping it into the calculator, and working out the answer. All right, so I think everybody is cool with that. Let's move on to the next thing. So this is where things get a little bit more difficult, okay? Not much, but just a little bit. So in this particular example, they tell us to consider the infinite geometric series. P is the first term. P times P plus one is the second term. P times P plus one squared is the third term, and so onwards, and so onwards, all right? Now, they've asked us in the first instance in A, for which values of P will the series converge? For which values of P will the series converge? The series will converge when R is between minus one and one. So this is what we're going to be subbing into in this case. But we need to work out the value of R in terms of E, okay? So working out the value of R means taking term two and dividing it by term one, or taking term three and dividing it by term two. So if I take P times P plus one, which is the second term, and I divide it by P, P divided by P is one. Okay, so one times P plus one means that R is equal to P plus one in this situation. So R in terms of P. This is now what I have to take over here and I have to go and sub it in there. All right, so remember R is greater than negative one, but smaller than one. So that means that P plus one has to be greater than negative one, but smaller than one. Now I'm solving an inequality, a linear inequality. I want to isolate P. I need to get P on its own. So I need to get, up, get rid of this plus one. So I'm going to take minus one away from the left, the middle, and the right. When I take it away from the left, I end up with negative two. When I take it away from the right, I end up with zero. So as long as P is a number that's bigger than negative two, but smaller than zero, my series is going to converge. I'm going to stop there and I'm just going to ask, are there any questions? Are there any questions? Whoa, do we get it, my people? Well done, guys. Well done. Big screenshots. Nice. Well done, my people. 
I see Ayanda says, uh, please repeat. Ayanda, you need to tell Mem exactly where, which part should Mem repeat. Also, Timbani, you're asking why does R have to be a fraction? Because that is the um, um, requirement for all converging geometric series. So a geometric series cannot converge if R is smaller than negative one or bigger than one, then it won't be a converging series, which means you won't be able to calculate a sum to infinity. That's why R has to be a fraction. Um, yes, I subtracted one from all the parts of the inequality. So in other words, over here, when I had P, this is my plus one, minus one, and then my one over here. So I've got to take the minus one away from the middle. So that means that I've got to take it away from the left-hand side as well. Okay, and then here I would have one minus one. So that's how I end up with my negative two on the left-hand side and my zero on the right. So P has to be between negative two and zero. Okay, Ria Betswe, you're asking, how did you get 42.67? Okay, so you're gonna put that, so it's negative 42.67, Ria Betswe. Okay, so you're gonna put that into your calculator. So into your calculator, you're gonna go negative 64 at the top, and at the bottom, one minus a negative half and press equals. And then you should get that answer. Okay. All right, so repeat the part after you've calculated R. Okay, so I think I did. I explained over here what I had done. So once I've worked out what R is in terms of P, I'm now going to sub it in over here. All right, into where r has got to be greater than negative one, but smaller than one, because they want me to work out the values of p for which the series is going to converge. Okay, <laughs> then it says, assuming that the series is convergent, calculate the sum to infinity. Okay, so now we are assuming it is a converging series. Let's now calculate um i'm going to come to those two questions now or maybe i should have dealt with that first before i spoke about this hang on a second so uh, how would the question be asked in the final paper um if it was a question like this one it would be exactly the same for which values of p would the series converge all right. Uh, what they wouldn't say in the final exam is assuming the series is convergent um it would just be Part B it would probably be hence calculate the sum to infinity. All right. But yeah, exactly the same language as what we're using now. All right, but we will look at exam questions, um, but we're going to do that closer to um, exam and control test time. What if R is greater than one? Then the series does not converge and it's not possible to calculate a uh, sum to infinity. Okay, final masutsa. How do you know if the series diverges or converges? If R is a number that is smaller than minus one or bigger than one, it is a diverging series. If R is bigger than minus one but smaller than one, then it is a converging series. So it depends on the value of R. Okay, Amatle? Um, are you talking about, so how are you talking about question A or question B? No problem, I say. Yes, so it's going to have to be in terms of P, isn't it? Because there are many different values that P could be. P could be minus one and a half, or it could be uh, no. minus one and a half. Okay, so there's a lot of different answers. So we're going to have to do this in terms of P. All right. So, so can you please, un sorry, Teacher Leah, please mute mm -hmm. yourself because I cannot find who's talking. I'm busy trying to look to mute you and we disturb Teacher Leah. Okay, so please make sure that you're muted when you're not talking. Thank you. Sorry, Teacher Leah. 
No, no problem. Thank you, Yulinda. Okay, so that was part A. Now we're going to do part B, and we're still working in terms of P. All right. Remember, A represents the first term. So in this case, the first term is P. So I'm going to put P at the top over one minus what R was. Remember, R was P plus one. So here, P plus one. Now, in matric, a lot of matrics are guilty of not using brackets when it is necessary to do so. All right, R is a binomial. I've got to make sure that I substitute using brackets. Okay, otherwise I'm gonna take away the P and not the one. So I'm gonna be left with P over one minus P minus one. So that's going to leave me with P over negative P because one minus one is zero. Okay, and anything divided by itself is one and a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So my sum to infinity is negative one. Okay, are there any questions about that? I'll just scroll up just a little bit. Ma'am, can you please repeat that again? Because I got disconnected for a few minutes, for a few seconds. Sorry. Okay, Rona, that's fine. Not a problem. So what I was doing is I was substituting into my sum to infinity formula. All right. So I know that the first term of my pattern, the first term of my pattern A is P. Okay. So the first term A is this P over here. So I'm going to put P at the top. Then at the bottom, I need to sub in R. So one minus using brackets, I know that R is equal to P plus one. So I'm going to put P plus one in brackets. I'm going to remove the brackets and then simplify my answer. So I've got P over one minus P minus one, which leaves me with P over negative P. And that's why the answer is negative one. Okay, so the, I've re-explained Stembile. I hope it makes a bit more sense now. What does it mean if a series is convergent? So Timbani, what it means is that if you were to take this particular pattern and you were to put it onto the Cartesian plane, all right, the pattern would approach an asymptote. So it would approach a ceiling or a value, all right? But it can never ever get bigger than that. That's what sum to infinity means. Okay, so it's approaching an asymptote. Okay, so in, in other words, so imagine, imagine this, Timbani. If I had to add, let's say I add one, and then I add 0, 0,1, and then I add 0, 0,01, and then I add 0, 0,00. One and then zero comma zero 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 one. I can keep doing that, okay. And all the this the the zeros are getting in front of my one are getting more and more and more. Eventually, the fraction that I'm adding is so minute that it's not going to change the sum of my final answer. Does that make sense to you? That is a converging series. So if you can imagine something like this, if I take um, one and I add zero comma one and then I add zero comma zero one then I add zero comma zero zero one okay and I keep going eventually I'm going to be adding a number because remember this is infinite okay that is so minute I mean how tiny is that number over there okay that it's not going to change the answer of my sum to infinity that is a converging series Okay. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Um, no, it's not always negative. Sometimes it's negative. Sometimes it's positive. Okay. Lemohang, it just depends on um, the, the terms in the series. Okay. No or where to? I haven't done sigma notation yet. Yes, Amashle, absolutely. So the next, the next one, I'm going to give you an opportunity to practice this concept. Okay, so here we go. There's your questions. All right, so question A is a little bit easier. 
question B is just a little bit trickier, but that's just in terms of the algebra, not in terms of the concept. There you go. You guys can either try A or you can try B. Okay. Or you can try both if you're a fast finisher. Let's go. It's our time now. Let's go, people. Let's go, my pibs. We can do this. Okay, so a lot of you are getting the same answer for question A, which is really encouraging. So if you did that one super quick and easy, let's see you do the second one. Okay, it's a good one for you guys to do. Okay. Naledi, try logging out and logging in again quick, quick. Oh, there we go. You need to do the same thing. I'm just online. I'm online at the moment. Sorry. I'll see you just now. Okay, so as far as the answers that were put up for question A were concerned, that's lovely, well done. And then a whole lot of you are putting, okay, now you can see your answers for B are a little bit different. So Kudwano, your answer is different to Amahle, that's different to Chloe. Chloe, you got the same answer as Ayanda. Zekhofatso, yours are pointing in the other direction. Incidentally, Zekhofatso, you are not allowed to do that, okay? You can't have your inequality signs pointing in that direction in a compound inequality. So I'd like to explain part B because, okay, so Awam is saying X is greater than three, it's smaller than one, so is Michaela. So let's go and have a look if you guys are correct. Okay, so we know in this situation over here, as far as question B is concerned, R is equal to two minus X. So now subbing that in, so oopsie, it's not two X, it's two minus X. Two minus X is being subbed in here, so greater than negative one 
but smaller than one. Now, the problem, of course, is that we're solving for x, but our x is a negative. So when we have an inequality and we multiply or divide by a negative, our inequality signs have to swap around. Okay, so um, I just want to explain to you why it does that very quickly. Okay, I'm sure we probably do know why, but if I make the, the statement that six is smaller than 10, that's a true statement. But if I take six and I divide it by negative two, and I take 10 and I divide that by negative two, is this still a true statement? Because what I'm saying is that negative three is smaller than negative five. Is that true? No, it's not. Okay, so this statement over here is incorrect. Okay, because negative five <clears throat> is smaller than negative three on the number line. That's why your inequality sign has to swap around. Okay, so it has to be, that's why it does that. Okay, so it's the same idea here. What I'm going to do, because this is a positive two, I've got to take two away from each side. So I've got minus one, minus two, I've got my negative x. Here, I've got one, minus two. So that means I've got negative x is greater than negative three, which is smaller than negative one. Now I'm going to divide through by negative one, but my inequality signs have to swap around. Okay, so this is going to be three, my inequality sign swaps round. This is going to be positive x, my inequality sign swaps round. This is going to be, I'm dividing through by negative one, so this is going to be one. I am not allowed to leave my answer like that. Okay, I have to write it with my arrows pointing to the left hand side. So what this means, is that x is in the middle. x is a number that is bigger than one, but smaller than three. Okay, and that is your final answer. Please re explain the one in the block, man. Um, okay, what did you what did you not understand? Where you change the arrows? Sorry, am I clear? I didn't hear what Amatle had said. Are there any other questions? Okay, so let's have a look here. Okay, so you want me to explain why the arrows are pointing in the other direction. Okay. So if you have a look at a lot of the answers, Okay, a lot of you were saying, so if you have a look, a lot of the answers that you guys have put up, you guys are saying this. Let me just put your answer in a different color. So X is a number, you're saying X is a number that is bigger than three, but smaller than one. Does that make sense? Just think about what you're writing here. X is bigger than three but smaller than one. That's what a lot of you have put into the chat. Does that make sense? Is it possible for a number to be bigger than three and smaller than one at the same time? What do you guys think? Is it possible for a number to be bigger than three but smaller than one in the same time. It's not, isn't it? Okay, it's not possible. Okay, so that doesn't make any sense. A number can't be bigger than three and smaller than one. All right. So that's why it's so important that we read carefully um, because what we write, it means something. Okay, and, and the notation that we meet, that we use in maths has a very specific meaning. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the inequality bit and what happened here again, all right? So the problem here, problem, is because I have to divide by negative. So let me just go through this bit here again with you guys. Okay, so we have subject. Okay, just give me one second. There's a bit of noise from outside. Can one of you just move the time for all the pieces? I can't... 
and put the match on. Thanks. Sorry, guys. <laughs> So this is a positive two, so I need to take two away. So I'm going to bring down my negative one, and then I'm going to take away two, and then I'm going to write my negative x, and then I'm going to write my one, and then I've got to remember to take away two again. So now I've got my negative x in the middle. Negative x is greater than negative three or smaller than. 1 minus 2 would leave me with negative 1. Now I have to divide each part of the inequality. I have to divide this part over here and this bit here and that bit there, all by negative 1. And when I divide by negative, my inequality sign has to switch around. Okay, so negative 3 becomes positive 3. Inequality sign turns around. Negative x becomes positive x. Inequality sign turns around. Negative 1 becomes positive 1. Now, when we write an in inequality like this, this is referred to as a compound inequality. Please, can we mute? <laughs> Thank you. All right. When we write a compound inequality, okay, so this is a compound inequality, right? So in other words, it has an upper bound and it has a lower bound. Our inequality signs are not allowed to point in this direction. So what I'm coloring it in, not point in that direction. They've got to point in this direction. The smaller number has to be on the left. Sorry, please can you mute? Mbile, please can you mute? Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. The smaller number has to be on the left and the bigger number has to be on the right. Okay. So one has to be on the left and three has to be on the right. Look here. X is greater than one. The crocodile's mouth is open to the X. So here it is still open to the X. The crocodile's mouth is open to the three. So see here, the crocodile's mouth is still open to the three. So I've written these two things. I haven't changed the meaning of the sum. It means the same thing. But I have to write it with a smaller number on the left and the bigger number on the right-hand side. Okay. So if you don't do that, they are going to penalize you. Um, in tests and exams and certainly at the NSC level. Okay, so let's just have a look in the chat. Smaller number on the left, yes, bigger number on the right. Always offensive when you are using compound inequality notation. So the value of R, do we take the common number in the sequence or what? So in other words, you're working out the value of R. Okay, and that's what you're going to go and sub in here, whatever it might be. Okay, so in this case, we were working out the values of x, what the values of x need to be in order for this series to converge. So we were taking this and we were subbing it in here. Let's have a look at the other questions. Okay, uh, Tsenolo, do you want me to repeat that? So when a series converges, it means that R is always going to be a number that's bigger than minus one, but smaller than one. That's for a converging series. Series diverge when R is smaller than negative one or bigger than one. You will not study diverging series in the track. You're only going to study converging series and calculate sum to infinity. Okay. Why is my R equal to two minus X? Remember R is equal to term two divided by term one. So if I've got r equals two minus x squared divided by two minus x, what this means, sorry, this is a question, for, sorry, I'm, I'm writing next to, I shouldn't, I wanted to write underneath, but I've run out of space. So it means two minus x times two minus x divided by two minus x. 
So I can cancel that with that, and that's why r equals 2 minus x. Okay, are there any other questions that you guys want to ask? Any other questions? Did my people understand? Is it six screenshots? Are you good? Is everything fine? I don't sure. see any hands, teacher Leah. Uh, so San Sandra's raised her hand. I see. Sandra, go for it. Uh -huh. Ask the question. Uh, Ma'am, will you please explain the uh, sum number, I mean, A, the one that says 1 plus bracket uh, 2x plus 1, up close brackets, uh, plus 2x plus 1 to the power 2, please, because I feel lost. Okay, so in this case over here, 2x plus 1 divided by 1 is what? 2x plus 1 divided by 1 it's going to be 2x plus 1, isn't it? Because if we divide anything by 1, we're not changing that question. So again, what I'm doing is I'm subbing in the value of r in terms of x into r has to be greater than negative 1 but smaller than 1. So I need to take 1 away. Okay, remember, I'm trying to isolate the x. So I'm going to take 1 away from each part. Okay, so I'm going to take 1 away on the left, one away from the middle, and one away from that side. And that's how I ended up with this. And then I divided through by two. So I divided the left by two, the middle by two, and the right by two. That's how we ended up with x is greater than negative one, but smaller than zero. Okay. Yes, we're going to do example 37. All right, Rona, I know you're keen to get into that. Okay, so this is a problem solving sort of question that I wanted to try and do with you guys this evening. All right, and then there's a couple more. Um, I don't know if we'll get a chance to do all of them, but there are some questions there for you guys to try and then I'll give you the answers the next time. So a convergent geometric series has a second term of eight and a sum to infinity of 36. Determine the possible constant ratios. So they're implying that there is more than one value for R, right? <clears throat> Your teachers should have explained to you how to write the second term of a geometric pattern in terms of A and R. So I, this is something that I have been through with you, but I'm just going to remind you. So term one is A. Term two is A times R. Term three is A times R times R. So that's where we get A R squared from. Okay, term four is A R cubed. So that's how we end up with our nth term, T N equals A R to the N minus one. Okay, so our value of n is always one smaller than the position of the term. So when they say to us, has a second term of 8, they want us to write what, Rona? What do they want us to write? They want us to make an equation. What do they want us to write? What, do you, what would you write? We could substitute the sum to infinity with 36. Okay. So you're going to substitute the sum to infinity with 36. So you're going to write here 36 equals A over 1 minus R. That's one you equation. Want to find R. You do. All right. So how would you write second term of 8? How would you write that? There I we go. Going to say eight is equal to eight times r. Okay, so you're going to say a r is equal to eight. Very nice. Well done. There are your two equations. There are your two equations. Okay, so the second term is a r. So over here, your second term is a r, and we said that it was equal to eight. Sum to infinity of six, thirty six. So there's our sum to infinity, and it's been made equal to 36. What do we need to do now, matrix? We've got to solve simultaneously. 
because they equate, want they us. equations to each other. Okay, so if I equate them to one another, how would I do that? How would I equate the equations to one another? So Can I? The first thing you do is make the denominators of the one with the fraction equal to each other, and A needs to be the product. I mean the 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 sum. The sub yes, yes. The subject, then, absolutely, absolutely. So to the other there, there yeah. we go. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So in other words, we're going to work with equation number two, and we're going to make a the subject because it's a times r. We have to divide both sides by r. So that means that a is going to be equal to 8 over r. And now, as you had said, we can take that and we can go and substitute it in here. So we have 36 equals a is 8 over r divided by 1 over r. Now we've subbed in. Remember, 36 means 36 over 1. What method can I use here? I mentioned it earlier. What method can I use here to solve for R? Cross multiply, man. That's it. That's it. Lovely. I can cross multiply. Okay, I can cross multiply. So now that's going to leave me with 36 times 1 minus r is equal to 1 times 8 over r, okay? Because 1 times anything, it's not going to change. I can now expand my brackets. That gives me 36 minus 36r equals 8 over r. What do I do now, Matrix? You make the denominators the same and then it gives you a quadratic equation. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Or absolutely. So Trish, I can multiply everything by R. Absolutely. So I can multiply this by R. I can multiply that by R. And I can multiply that by R. So that means I'm going to end up with... 36r minus 36r squared is equal to 8. Okay, so just as, sorry, I don't know what your name is, um, but as the gentleman said, we're going to end up with a quadratic. So I'm going to move the two terms on the left over to the right, so it's going to become positive 36r squared minus 36r plus Eight. Okay, and now that is a fairly nasty quadratic in order to solve. So what can I use to help me so that I don't have to stress too much about factorizing? What can I use? The quadratic equation. Exactly, the quadratic formula. Okay, so remember your quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, except I'm not solving for x, I'm solving for r, right? So I'm going to write r equals negative b plus minus b squared. Remember, you've got to substitute using brackets minus 4ac all over 2a, right, and now I should get, sorry, let me just, I don't know why my pen does that sometimes, 2a, so now I have r equals or r equals, let's go and see what the value of r is in this case, I'm sure some of you have probably already worked it out. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Ah, so Sihawu, you've got those answers. Kirsten, you've also got the same answers. 
Let's put it into my calculator. While we are on it, just remember that you can find the recordings on Watsubi's website. Okay, so this one will be posted on Watsubi's website tomorrow. Okay, y'all are doing really, really good. You are. You are amazing. You are an absolute pleasure to work with. Okay, so I'm getting one answer as two over three, which I know is one of the answers that was put into the chat. And I'm getting my other answer as one, one over three. So can you see both of those answers are bigger than negative one, but smaller than one? Okay, that's why it's possible for this to be a converging geometric series. Okay, so both of those answers are valid in this case. Yes, very good. Well done. Awesome. Yeah, so either two over three or one over three. Those are the possible solutions for R. So yeah, just showing you the question again. And there's our answer. Okay. Are there any questions? Oh, uh, ma'am, can you please just um, see question five? I just want to take a screenshot. Sure. So uh, question five and question six are there for you guys. Remember, you were asking for extra questions to practice. So those are questions for you to practice. And then the answers will be up at the beginning of the next lesson. Okay. So take a screenshot of those if you want to. Those are your practice questions. A little bit more difficult this time, but good practice with problem solving. It's a pleasure. Okay, so Ria Betsu, are you asking why was A equal to 36? Okay, so remember when something is in standard form, Ria Betsu, it's in the form 0 equals AX squared plus BX plus C. So 36 is our A. That's why A was equal to 36 because it is the coefficient of the uh, x squared or r squared term. Yes, of course, offense. I'll go back down here. There you go. So take a screenshot of questions five and six. This is extra practice for you guys. And then I'll put the answers up the next time. Pleasure, Rhea Betsu, no problem. Okay, are there any other questions that you guys would like to ask before we... No problem, Bonga. So I'm going to go back up here. All right, so Bonga, there was the example. So take a picture of that. Okay, Katleho, we're going to answer your question now. So Bonga, hopefully you've taken a picture of this. And then I'm just going to move it down a little bit. And there was the second part, Bonga. And then maybe you want to take another picture. Sorry, because... The answers have been cut off, so I'm just going to move it down a little bit more. There you go. I hope that helps. Katleho, go for it. Unmute and ask. You said that you're going to like share question papers of the topic questions from the exams. Okay, but we're not going to. Um, I don't, we're not going to do exam questions now. We're going to do it closer to when you guys actually end up writing exams or control tests. Okay, okay. because... Because unfortunately, because this, this course was only four lessons long, so I haven't had a chance to be able to do exam questions with you, but I promise I will. Okay, I will always do that. What we do at Watobi, it's really nice, is we have um, like boot camps and revision sessions, and then we do those on Saturdays when our lessons can be a little bit longer, and then we look at all sorts of exam type questions, so we'll be doing that as well. Okay, so I'll go through those with you then. All right, so there's the quiz for this evening.
Well done, well done, well done. Uh, Romeo, be careful because we, um, by the rules of uh, Watobe, we are not allowed to give any information um, to, well, between each other, you cannot send DMs to each other. So that's not allowed because of the Poppy Act that just came out recently. So we just sort of protect, uh, protecting every learner in here. That, that's not a problem of Fente. I hope everyone had a great time learning these things. And remember that that's the quiz that you need to do. And it's not whether that you pass or not of the quiz. It's to check if you did understand what teacher Leah was teaching you. And if you see that you got a very low mark, please go back to this recording and listen again so that you can practice and then redo the quiz, okay? Because you're allowed to redo the quiz as much as you want. Take screenshot. Oh, so, um, Filwe, I'm just, um, there's the practice questions. I think you've got a shot of that now. I'll wear to, I will go back to the start of lesson for you. That's not a problem. All right, I'm going to go back up to the start of the lesson. Okay, so Offense, this is where we were when we started. We did that. Okay, so I was talking about what makes something a converging series as opposed to it being a diverging series. Does that help? There we go. Oh, it's a pleasure. Pleasure, Rebet. So I'm glad you enjoyed the lesson.